since we're in Minneapolis, St. Paul, Katrina's hometown, and um, because I like this poem so much, and because I like the end of it so much, and because it kind of gets what I want to talk about tonight. My sister and I grew pumpkins, Cinderella's by the vine full, until they nudged the feet of Daddy's sugar snow corn. She remembers waiting, waiting for their shells to quicken with rain in each moon's phase, waiting for our father to carve the faces we drew on the pumpkins with pencil, because he said that girls could cut themselves with knives. Here's what nobody seems to remember. She was 19 and pregnant and apologetic. I was 12, and we were both aware that in fall, all things are round, apples and raindrops, harvest moons, squash. She asked him to carve the smallest pumpkin in the patch for the baby, and our father walked out, left us alone, two girls, three pumpkins, slotted spoons, a butcher knife. In the mirror of the dark, sorry, in the mirror of the dark man at the kitchen window, blushed by leaves, I asked her not to cry. Instead, she cut into a pumpkin's head and scraped its wet insides from grainy walls and then abandoned her spoon. Her fingers rusted seeds from the pale gourd pulp until they slid, separated from its skull through her hands, first as droplets, then as strings of pearls. She said, we don't need father anymore. We can carve this ourselves. Watch me slice out lips and eyes where none has been before. When she hunched to light the votive, it sputtered, then glowed. And after, when we, were, when we went outside to look at her finished lantern from the road, I said I liked the way her light shone through the face that flickered in the dark. Gosh, that's good. Oh.